This Health in Focus is a paid segment by Jag and Nathan Neurosurgery. Welcome to another Health in Focus. We've got our friend, Dr. Jay Jaganathan, board-certified neurosurgeon, and patient Amy Parker here. Today, we're talking about the SI joint. So, Dr. Jay, we'll start with you. Tell us what this is and how it can cause problems for people. So, the SI joint is a low-motion joint that connects the hips to either side of the torso. And by low motion, I mean, unlike the neck or the lower back, which are constantly moving, uh, the SI joint has less motion, but it does connect the... Uh, the pelvis to the spine and the legs. So it does have a very important function uh, in terms of motion. So it can be thought of almost like a shock absorber between the lower body and the, uh, the torso. Okay. And it can be a big problem for people with back pain and, and you know, a significant number of people. This is yeah, so SI joint dysfunction is fairly common in patients who have back pain. And unfortunately, the symptoms are, uh, uh, are sometimes indistinguishable from pain symptoms related to back pain. Uh, common symptoms are pain in the back, in the pelvic area, the groin, and the hip. Um, studies have shown uh, up to 30% of patients with low back pain uh, can have some form of SI joint disease. So uh, it can be a very strong, um, uh, uh, have a very strong relationship to, uh, to low back pain. Sure. And what are some ways that you treat this? Um, so the first thing is making the diagnosis. Uh, that's usually done, obviously, through a clinical history, uh, as with this Parker's case, with somebody who has uh, uh, the symptoms. Uh, imaging studies, such as CTs, MRIs, x-rays, are usually important to demonstrate it. And usually what we look for is uh, a transient improvement with injections into that side joint. So when you do a shot of steroid medications there, patients oftentimes will notice an improvement temporarily, but then the pain recurs. Uh, and then part of the clinical history is also that you, is part of it is that certain exercises, certain maneuvers, when a patient tends to stress that joint more, tends to cause pain. So that's something else you look for. Okay. So Amy, tell us a little bit about your backstory and how this pain came on for you. Uh, well, actually, mine started when I was about 17. I was in a sledding accident, and the doctor at the time said I would have problems down the road as an, an, an adult. Um, so I ended up having um, my L5-S1 um, fused, and I still continued to have pain in the groin, going down my leg, and nothing was helping that. So I had talked to Dr. Jake and Nathan about the uh, SI joint surgery and decided to have my left side done in January. And that went so well. I said, I, I need to have that right side done because I, it's very painful. And what it, it's a great improvement, immediate. I'm feeling great, back to golfing, back to work. Can't complain. Wonderful. Uh, yes. Well, so, and, and yeah, so Dr. J, definitely something that people need to come and see um, and, and really make sure that this is diagnosed correctly then. Yeah, the diagnosis is important. I think Ms. Parker made a good point too, that one of the things with this procedure is unlike a spine surgery where you're going to be normally, you know, fully weight bearing, uh, because you're working on the hip joint, there will be your, there's some restrictions with weight bearing. So that's something else that patients, uh, you should keep in mind around surgeries that you would uh, at least temporarily need a walker or a cane to help you get around. And, uh, uh, you know, if you've got a you know wedding where you've got to be dancing or something like that, you probably don't want to get the surgery done right before. So it's just a matter of, uh, of sort of planning it in an appropriate time. And, and yes, the diagnosis is, uh, is critical as well. Perfect. Well, thank you both so much for your time. Uh, Amy, I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Take thank care you. of yourself. Um, and of course, if people want more information about Dr. J, what he does, um, they can always head to our website, 9and10news.com. This Health in Focus is a paid segment by Jag and Nathan Neurosurgery.